A very good evening and welcome to this edition of the 933 KFM Hot Seat. Charles Mongushampagi within the studio, colleagues Bernard Tawaira and Angelo Izama. <laughs> Bernard is a consultant with African Center for Media Excellence. He's Excellence. a, co- he's a hmm? co-founder. Co-founder. He, he, he describes uh-huh. himself as consultant. Uh, wrote a very interesting piece in the Sunday Monitor uh, on uh, the, the sparing between uh, John Nagenda and um, Tamale Mirundi. Very, very, very interesting analysis, uh, which I loved reading. And of course, Harold Achema's piece on uh, a review of a book, which, which I found very, very interesting. Um, Angelo Izama just returned from a one-year fellowship at Stanford University. Our guests are stuck in incredible traffic this evening, but they are struggling. Some of them said they're jumping on border borders to join us uh, in the discussion. So we'll be waiting for them and we'll announce them as soon as they get into the studio. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, we'll have an in-studio discussion uh, between us on continuing revelations from Whistleblower website WikiLeaks, freedom of expression, and where this is taking us. Angela, where you away, I and Bernard were invited as guests of uh, the state to mm. answer, uh, to explain what we do and <laughs> how we invite our guests, who, who places the call when they arrive and uh, mm. how we deal with them. What's your agenda? Mm? Yeah, wha- wha- yeah, I think they're trying to find that, to <laughs> find out if the guests ask us to invite them or if we initiate the, the, the invitations. That re- reminds me of <coughs> that incredible period. Um, is it in 2005 when um, the late Dr. John Garang died and I was a producer for Mwenda Live <coughs> and I was uh, standing there uh, where the current producers are, uh, and uh, the discussion got quite heated, and I started receiving like n- uh, pretty negative uh, um, SMSs, and I stepped into the studio to calm Andrew. His guests, I think, were uh, Ronald uh, Reagan Okumu and uh, Moses Biarhanga. Mm. The whole thing had just gone uh, uh, haywire, uh, but most people do not have the appreciation of the p- the entire production process that. In f- that in fact we apply very professional standards. If you take that show, uh, for which later the New Vision al- announced that I had been <laughs> fired <laughs> by, by, <laughs> by, 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 by the broadcasting council, <laughs> as if oh. they are, I have a contract with them, you know, th- they, they announced publicly on the front page that as a a, a way to resume uh, the show, that one of the conditions was that I had been fired as a as a producer for the show, but <coughs> unknown to most of uh, even our listeners the show was structured in such a way that if you invite a guest uh, from the government you always have an opposition uh, viewpoint expressed that explains you know Reagan and uh, and, Moses. And, and Moses and that the the, the show hosts like Mwenda and now you you know has an obligation to balance their uh, their process the, the guys who and I have been before that uh, police uh, special unit on media crimes. They really have no expertise in uh, in the newsroom, no one expertise in, um, in in the production process. They are not even fast learners. Instead, they are trying to go after you for evidence of a crime. And then that's that's our only uh, that that was my only problem with it. Every time we are there, we say, well, here is how we d- we. If you don't like the subject, that's a different thing. You mm. know? But don't <coughs> don't hang us for what we have done, which is really follow uh, professional procedure. Found very interesting when we were uh, guests there, and uh, the the way I was interrogated and uh, the way Bernard was interrogated were fundamentally different because um, I I think the investigating officer had realized that we didn't give much to him, so he decided to pose questions um, to Bernard that were supposed to elicit only specific answers uh, at the end of the day. And Bernard was, uh, I think the guy impressed you quite a bit. You, you, you are sitting in an observer position. Uh, try, you've been trying to train uh, journalists, and um, I can see one of the guests is arriving, so we'll be switching discussions uh, if, 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 if very shortly. Um, Bernard, you've been following the media in Uganda. In the age of things like WikiLeaks, like uh, Twitter, like <coughs> Facebook, where there is a lot more discussion in these social networks, when there are a lot more people uh, digging in to get information that government is trying to hide, where does the media find its footing? Well, uh, the, the thing is, all these um, new technologies or uh, w- ways, new ways of using the uh, new technologies uh, are proving a bit of a... People just don't know how to 
deal with them. Institutions don't quite know institutions, especially uh, government, and uh, almost all governments around the world haven't yet developed uh, proper laws and regulatory mechanisms to deal with this just because uh, the technologies are developing much faster. Uh, you know, the other day it was all, the blogs were all the rage before we knew it. We were talking about Facebook, before we, Facebook even people got used to it, were on to Twitter, and then I don't know, I've just had a couple other new things. And and But even the way that people are using all these Twitters and Facebooks is changing. Uh, the things changing LinkedIn rapidly. that haven't picked up yet. Uh, LinkedIn as for professional, uh, mm. if you want to exchange professional information, Information you can upload your um, your CV on there. If you want to share photos, you've got Flickr. If you want to, you know, there's a whole range of things going on. Um, but it's quite interesting. Just today, the fire in Nairobi, you know, it was just Twitter was all over the place, and you could follow almost uh, second by second what's what's happening, which is quite interesting if you're mm. a news junkie and you're interested in knowing what's going on. Uh, but also, of course, as we've seen uh, most recently in North Africa, you can use it for you know mobilizing and organizing. And uh, that's, where more revolutionary purposes that's where governments are concerned, uh, uh, are worried, are running scared. And you hear people who uh, I think should be focused on doing better things. Uh, people like uh, Godfrey Mtawazi now sort of insinuating and hinting that they are going to come up with a law uh, to check social media. And I hope he's not being misquoted. Um even if they did, I don't think they have the capacity to enforce it. By the time that law comes into being, we'll have moved on to the next uh, big thing. So it's difficult. Now, talking about the media, these the media, of course, uh, play catch up. They try to harness these, you know, technologies to their uh, to their to to to, to uh, enhance their ability to gather news and to disseminate the news as well. And now you see, if you go to the monitor website, you have a whole dedicated Twitter, a little Twitter section, and people mm. commenting on the stories and people. Mm. And also, uh, all these papers now highlight. You, you know, if you follow, if you're on Twitter and you follow uh, the monitor, um, the monitor handle, <laughs> mm. <laughs> or you know, the language also matters, or the new vision of the observer, you you'll see they'll update. They'll tell you, you know, these are the hot stories coming up and you know it's just nice to do to do that so i think the media uh will uh, just take advantage of that actually wikileaks uh wikileaks case is interesting because uh, first of all let me just say that i'm all for julian assange and i've had very some hot debates about this somebody argued that you know julian assange is not a media house so what business does he have exposing mm. uh, all of these uh, uh these classified who, who does he account to and things like yeah that. who does mm. he what are the kinds of processes this is not like you know the uh, pentagon papers when the new york times exposed uh, mm. a government report a u.s government report about the uh, the problems with the war in uh, Vietnam and whatever that sort of is um, is a is a watermark um, moment in in these things. So, but um, for me, if you're exposing government, especially a government like the United States, is huge. You know, this superpower. I, I have an person straight telling you, in knowing what is uh, what is going on, uh, but other people don't see but it that way. But also. Just, just as I conclude on this, it's, it's been fascinating even just getting a sense of what the Americans think of our government here and what's going on, who thinks what of whom. And, you know, today you have there our friend, uh, Justice Faith Monda, <laughs> <laughs> who's, uh, who I think uh, still hopes that uh, he will, she will get me into jail it, it, for it jail. <laughs> the story of her pay and, um, uh, and things like that. We are challenging that, of course. Uh, so you crim have criminal uh, defamation in the Supreme uh, Court. I, I, I don't know about that, but I have an if interesting if story. If then the case will go back. We'll go for trial in the uh, at the Nakawa Chief Magistrate's Court where, where she under the sits as the so resident judge. So it was interesting. It is interesting. I was for the World Press Freedom Day uh, events, uh, Honorable Musumba. I was with uh, Bernard's colleague and our former editor, Doctor Mwesige, in Washington. It's a UNESCO organized conference together with uh, the U.S. government. <coughs> so the flyers over there, and the panels are talking about press freedom in the digital age. This was supposed to be the groundbreaking international meet, you know, eh? between journalists and organizations about press freedom in this day of the web. Not a mention of uh, WikiLeaks. Why I later learned that the, 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 uh, the guys who are organizing the conference 
every time they were communicating with the state department all the panels were edited these governments are basically the same so they are on those panels because i was i was uh, on twitter every time they they didn't mention uh, assange and wikileaks we started now a a, a, a back discussion but the, the people who were supporting the 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 lack of discussion on where wikileaks had pushed the envelope eh, on transparency guess who they were all these colleagues of ours in the in the, in the u.s the the, the so-called champions of a, of a greater well, press none of them none of them including leading investigative reporters hmm, who were on the panels in fact peter Mercy was on one of those panels mentioned maybe it was only peter who uh, tried to talk about uh, assange but he's he is a persona non grata and these double standards you know eh, can be reflected because a the u.s government likes to say it's a champion of, of free press and then when it comes to uh, this particular issue they don't want even a discussion about it and they want to prosecute well uh, julian assange is helping us understand what uh, the, the gossipy nature of uh, our leaders uh, we're waiting because <laughs> 250,000 <laughs> that, that cannot be a bad thing 250,000 we, we should meet salam at the club and have friends i'm actually waiting to see <laughs> what, uh, what i tell you is what i tell them <laughs> what, 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 what's well, well, said well, about well, the government no, what she enough. said about her boss in the fdc and her colleagues in the FDC because those will be coming. I'm <laughs> waiting. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a treasure trove of some sorts. But at least we know what the president thinks about his uh, uh, contemporaries on the continent, his peers on the continent, and the second guest is also arriving. Let me introduce. In the studio, can I introduce the guest, please? Let me introduce the Honorable Salam Musumba. She's vice president of the Forum for Democratic Change. Uh, Salam, very nice to have you on the hot seat. Yes, thank you for having me. It's been quite a long time and I'm glad to be here. When uh, Honorable David Bahati, Member of Parliament for Ndoro West Constituency, was stuck in traffic, uh, we were chatting, we were talking on the phone and I was wondering, I is it because Kampala has, Uganda has progressed so much or is it because uh, the planning has gone haywire? What is the problem with uh, that, that creates all these incredible traffic jams? Because I know both of you are contemplating at one time or the other uh, to jump out of the vehicle and get uh, a border. Yes, get on a border yeah. with the risks associated with that and yes. the borders are being chased out of town uh, according to KCCA uh -huh. uh, effective next week so it won't be an option very soon. Honorable Bahati, very nice to have you on the hot set. Thank you. But but just, just before you go for the break, we're talking about WikiLeaks. Now we have an idea who was against uh, the anti-homosexuality bill. Who was the brains behind, or rather, who is the brains behind the anti-homosexuality bill? And uh, who was planning to make it die a natural death? Very nice to, to know. Thanks to WikiLeaks. You know, After you know, show, come on. The hottest debate on all relevant topics, live. Every